So for these last two examples, we're kind of just going off of what we did yesterday. It's going to give us transformations and we have to apply them to our function. So this says, let the graph of G be a vertical stretch by a factor of two and a reflection in the X axis followed by a translation three units down of the graph of F of X is equal to X squared. Write a rule for G and identify the vertex. So we have three things that are happening here. A vertical stretch by a factor of two, a reflection in the X axis, and a translation three units down. So when we have a vertical stretch by a factor of two, what do we need to do to our function to reflect this? What do we do to our function to show a vertical stretch by a factor of two? Two X. We multiply by two on the inside or the outside? The outside. The outside. So before when we were doing these, sometimes it didn't matter whether it was inside or outside, but here we have an x squared, so it definitely matters whether we're applying the transformation inside the parentheses or outside the parentheses. Next, let's look at our reflection in the x-axis. What do we need to do to show a reflection in the x-axis? You put a negative. On the inside or outside? Um, outside? Outside. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So you just remember you want to keep your negative, your negative x's outside. You don't want to let them in the house. It, like, it'll be the same thing if it's in the parentheses. It'll be reflection on the y-axis? Right. Okay. And then last, we have a translation, three units down. How do we show this? Minus three. Minus three on the outside. So now we need to apply all three of these to our x. This one, we're lucky here. All three things are happening outside of our parentheses. So we just have our x squared. And then we need to multiply the front by negative two and then subtract three. So our g of x is negative 2x squared minus 3. Next, we need to identify the vertex here. So we know that our vertex form is a times x minus h squared plus k. And our vertex is h comma k. So whatever we add or subtract inside the parentheses, that's our first number in our vertex. Whatever we add or subtract outside of our parentheses, that's our second number in our vertex. So are we adding or subtracting anything inside our parentheses for our g of x? Can you say the question again? Are we adding or subtracting anything inside our parentheses for our g of x? No. No. So what do you think our first number in our vertex is going to be? Zero. Zero. So we don't have an h in our g of x. So our first number in our vertex is zero. Do we have a k in our g of x? Are we adding or subtracting anything on the yeah. outside? Yes. Minus 3. Minus 3. So our k is minus 3. So our vertex is going to be 0, negative 3. All right, in our next example, example 4, we're doing the same thing. So we have three transformations going on. A translation, three units right, two units up, and then a reflection in the y-axis. 
So how would we show a translation three units right? Plus or minus three on the inside of the parentheses. Perfect, minus three on the inside. How do we show two units up? Plus two on the outside. Plus two on the outside. And then a reflection in the y-axis. A negative on the inside. Awesome, a negative on the inside. So now we need to apply all three of these things to our f of x graph, which our f of x is now x squared minus 5x. So instead of just being an x squared, where we only have to plug our stuff in to 1x, here we have two x's that we need to plug it into. So we're going to start with what happens on the inside. So we need to take x minus 3 and plug that into both our x's in our formula in our function. So we have x minus 3 squared minus 5 times x minus 3. So I'm only doing the translation three units right right now. So I just plugged that x minus 3 into both of our x's in our function. Everybody with me so far? Okay, how do I simplify this x minus 3 squared? Distribute the 2. The 2 is telling us that it's squared. So we have x minus 3 times x minus 3. How would we multiply these two things together? Use the foil. Foil, awesome. So we are going to foil these. So we multiply the first two terms together. This gives us x squared. Then the outside terms together, so we get negative 3x the insides, negative 3x, and then the last ones, plus 9. When we simplify this, we get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So we FOIL them. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. So we have x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then how would we multiply this negative 5 to the x minus 3? What do we need to do? this part here. How do we simplify the second part of our equation? Distribute. Distribute. So we have negative 5 times x and negative 5 times negative 3. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. A negative 5 times negative 3 is plus 15. Now we just need to combine like terms. So we have x squared minus 11x and then plus 24. So right now, all we did was apply this translation three units right. Next, we're going to apply this two units up. So we need to add two to the outside. So we're just going to add two. Again, we can combine like terms. So we have x squared minus 11x plus 26. And then lastly, we have to apply this reflection in the y-axis. So every single x we see in our equation, we're going to replace it with a negative x. So this x squared becomes negative x squared. And then we have minus 11 times negative x 
plus 26. And then the last thing we need to do is simplify. So how do we simplify this negative x squared? What does this simplify to? Negative x. I'm not sure. It's a good guess. What happens when we square a negative number? What does it become? It goes positive. It goes positive. So negative x squared, when that negative is on the inside, it's the same thing as saying x squared. So we can change it to positive. What about our second term here? We have negative 11 times negative x. Lexi, what do we get here when we multiply these two together? Positive 11x. Perfect, positive 11x. And then we just add our 26 at the end. So this is our final answer here. So g of x is equal to x squared plus 11x plus 26. So we just have to apply one transformation at a time. So apply your transformation, simplify it, apply the transformation, simplify, apply the transformation.